Okay, so this is, uh, I guess, the latest project that we're trying to work out. So this is hopefully going to be a electric uh, furnace or kiln, I should say. So why are we making this? Well, I'm hoping to get into metal casting, um, where you pour metal into a shape, effectively. So the reason I'm trying to make this for that is that I found a process online called lost wax casting, where you take a wax mold, you then coat it in a high temperature shell, it could be ceramic shell, it's kind of like painting it in this really tough um, resistant uh, material that hardens. So you have your shell then, uh, you then put it into like an electric oven, you melt out the wax and harden the shell, but that can take quite of a while to do, so it might be an hour or two, probably more. Uh, and then afterwards you have a perfect mold to pour your metal into that'll give you the exact shape of the wax model. So the one thing I'm trying to debate here is I've been loosely stacking these bricks because this is the first time doing something like this so I want to, it's obviously a lot of learnings to get but I'm trying to debate whether I should have the bricks kind of uh, laying down flat or up on their sides like this. So the reason you'd want them sideways like this is that obviously you've more um, even more thickness here that it's going to act as a much better insulator for the heat so it'll mean be easier to keep the heat in here and potentially make the oven a bit more efficient and more energy uh, more energy effective however if I stack them sideways like this because I still need to go I think another two or three layers higher because I want to be able to get the full height of my current 3d printer which is about 400 millimeters tall um, this gives me a much better bang for my buck because these bricks are actually a little bit expensive. So if I flip it sideways like that, obviously I can maximize the uh, the volume per brick, if that makes sense. Okay, so I'm just gonna run a very quick test here. So this is a blowtorch, as you can see, it goes up to 1,925 degrees. So these bricks are actually only rated for 1,000, 1,200, so that getting right hot there. Let's move that back. So let me see. Yeah, there we go. So you can kind of see that's like above what this thing's rated for. Back of the wall here is really cold, room temp. So let me just see if I got the whole IR gun here. 18 degrees Celsius. Okay, we're looking okay. It's above what this thing can handle. But it's probably not far off operating temperatures we'll be going at. So that's 21 degrees Celsius. Like, there's no difference up along the length of it there. So, I think that's a good enough uh, indicator to say that, I guess, width wise, that'll be enough. The main question here um, they still have is whether this will be the same over time. So obviously this is going to instantly be blasting with high heat uh, and it's holding its temperature really well there. Uh, this is going to be running for like an hour or two uh, um, at least, so will that kind of remain the same then? Who knows. Okay, it's blasting it for a while there, so it was kind of reading around 500 degrees a second ago, but anyway, yeah, so it's backed around there. But, um, like, I guess just a touch, sides here, below it, obviously, that's fine. Only starts getting warm about there, so that's still like in the blast radius, which makes sense. Back of this is completely fine. In terms of the top of this, which is probably the most important bit, it's cool all the way to about there, so.
Okay, so I'm just going to recap uh, how it all went. So, basically, it was all a complete disaster the first time around. So, I assembled it initially flat on the on a, the bench top like this. Uh, kind of stuck all the bricks together, but I couldn't get them to squeeze in enough. I think what happened was it was too long between when I put down the first brick uh, and put the mortar on it, got, and then got the whole thing assembled, and then compressed it. So the mortar had hardened. And so I couldn't actually compress it anymore, uh, which meant that there was huge massive gaps in it and I just couldn't get the right shape and everything was gaps and was, yeah. So what I actually ended up doing was scraping off all the mortar. I was able to actually salvage a lot of that just by kind of mixing a bit more water in with it, uh, then mixing it back in with the original uh, batch of mortar. So hopefully that hasn't wrecked the whole tub of mortar, I think it should be alright. Consistency was kind of the same around the whole time, which is good. Um, so round two, what I did was I actually flipped this entire thing and built it like a wall. That worked a lot better because with the clamps I could compress it sideways and then also have gravity pushing it down. So it meant that as soon as I put down, as soon as I put on a layer of mortar like this, I was able to I was able to kind of squeeze it on the first layer together in straight away that meant I could get a good uh, good first layer and the next layers down it was much easier to push uh, like downwards against gravity to really get that to close out those gaps that I needed so that was a lot of effort just to get the base layer but I think based on what I've seen here that the doing it flat is very difficult but doing it vertically is easy I'm a lot more hopeful for the rest of it um, but yeah so now I'm gonna let this set for about a day or two, um, uh, at least it'd be annoying if this fails, but if it fails it's, more, it's less annoying than if the whole thing is built and crumbles. So yeah, that's where it is for now and uh, I'll update you the next time um, I get going.